Howdy once again, it's Tubal Kane, your humble YouTube internet shop teacher. And this is uh, video tips number 475. Be sure and watch 474 because it's all about lathe mandrels. And essentially what I'm doing here, in this video, I'm going to cast up several of these small wheels. And in the, in the following video, I'm going to crown the wheels, that is to put a double taper on them, which allows these wheels to track, that is to track a, a belt sander, uh, or a belt, a belt. This is for a belt sander. I'm not actually going to make the belt sander. The whole essence of this three or four part video is to show you how to uh, crown a wheel or a pulley of uh, any given size. So I'll talk more about that in the next one. So this video really is about casting these wheels, uh, making a mold and, and pouring the uh, aluminum. You've seen me do that a lot of times. These 3D printed uh, split pattern wheels were made for me. Uh, well, not made for me. Kevin Peterson out of Austin, Texas uh, did the uh, CAD work for me, the 3D CAD, and then I printed these. Real quickly now, I am sitting at my computer and I'm at the Thingiverse site. Anyone interested in the patterns uh, to make these wheels, you can uh, download them here. And Moon is my home. That's Kevin Peterson site. He's the one that created these patterns and you can download those STL files and print one out and cast some out if you want. So there they are. They have pattern draft on them and nice uh, fillets. They're just beautifully made. And I thank Kevin again for doing this for me. Notice that, and I got two pairs of them, that uh, the beautiful radius in there, the fillet that uh, Kevin did, nice chamfers these are about three inches. There's a set screw hole on one side and not on the other, but then again, I may uh, make one with like this without a, a set screw boss, I should say. So I'm going to make about uh, four or six of these two in a mold. And some of you might find this interesting, although I've done this over and over. This is the first time I've used these patterns. I have not tested them, but I know they'll withdraw. Kevin put about a 3D, 3 degree taper on them. Very nice looking way to make a, a pattern. When I was teaching a school and I had my business Peterson products, one of the 10 projects that I offered and that I built in the school shop was a band sander that used three wheels like this and uh, a little electric motor. It used a one inch by 42 inch sanding belt which was pretty popular size at that time. I believe you can still get them. I'm not gonna again make the complete sander. This is just showing you how to cast and then crown the wheels and using mandrels which I showed you in the previous video. Alright let's get on with it. Here I am at my McEngelvin molding bench and I've had many questions about this little mini mite uh, sand mauler that I use. I don't actually show it much but I'm using it that is it, it blends and mixes and, uh, and mulls the sand. I'm going to do a separate video on that. Uh, I've had a lot of questions about that. Uh, you really can't operate a foundry properly without a mauler. This is Petrobon oil type sand. And uh, this is a 10 by 12 flask, 3 inch cope, 3 inch drag. Can you see the two patterns in there? I wish I had a couple more pairs. I wish I had printed a couple more pairs and I could do four on there instead of the two and speed up the process, make just one mold. But there, the patterns are ready to go. And use a little parting sand as always. Like that. Some people use a brush. Uh, howdy, my for boy. Uh, glad you're watching, and I consider you an expert at this compared to myself. So now I will. Uh, I'm going to put some gloves on because the sand is so messy and hard to clean your hands. So let me do that and grab my riddle, and we'll get on with it. You have seen me do this countless times. This is an eighth inch riddle. It's nothing more than a sieve. It breaks up the sand. I like to get some 
fine sand next to the pattern, that's all I'm doing. And fill it up the rest of the way. And I will cut the sprue right about here. I'll mark that. Now ready to separate the cope from the drag. I'll cut some gates. And remove the patterns. They pulled very nicely. The mold is closed and it's ready to pour. There's no need for a weight on top of this like you would with cast iron or much larger castings because the hydraulic pressure of the aluminum is so minimal with two small aluminum castings that it's not going to separate. But, well, we, I guess we've talked about that. So that one is ready to pour. I'm going to make an identical one off camera. I did manage to make another mold and the two wheels fit in there but just barely so I hope they're okay and the entire video so far took about 45 minutes or an hour including the melt and the pour now I'll be back in about a half hour or 45 minutes for the most important and the fun part 
and that does no work and that is the shakeout. Instead of playing around in my foundry I should be cutting the grass. It rained two inches last night and look at the water grass, crab grass, I don't know what you call it where you are but here in northern Illinois I woke up in the middle of the night with just a, a roaring sound and you know what it was? It was the sound of the corn growing and it's already shoulder high and it's only the middle of June. All right, let's go back and break those castings out. It's been 45 minutes, but they'll be plenty hot. So a uh, fella has to <clears throat> be careful not to burn himself on the sand, let alone the metal. I think we got two usable castings there. Matter of fact, they look quite good. Let me break open the other one. I made these round flasks many, many years ago. They're about 8 inch with hydraulic tubing from a hydraulic elevator that was at the school. They had to replace it. It went about 30 or 40 feet into the ground. Some of it was badly rusted, but I of course I salvaged it all. They cut it into about eight foot sections as they hoisted it out. Now I get asked from time to time, what's that funny looking orange stuff? This actually is what Petrobon sand looks like when it's new. I've got it a little bit mixed here, but as the oil burns out, uh, it, it very quickly turns a very dark color, but it's a brilliant orange, brighter than this, and sometimes you see it mixed in because there's a little bit at the bottom of the bin here, so I'm just explaining that to, to people as to what that is. It, again, this is an oil bonded sand. The, the brand name is Petrobon. I love it, but it can't be used for cast iron, but I don't do cast iron. Very nice. Hot, hot, hot. Very nice looking uh, castings. Uh, a little rough around the parting line there as I pulled it out, but that's not the fault of the pattern. So I've got four of these, and I'm going to make two more off camera just so I have them here as long as the furnace and everything is, is pretty hot. Because uh, when I do the next video, if I goof one up, not that I ever goof any up, I've got some spares. Now at school, each student needed three of these. I had four mounted on a match plate because invariably they're going to ruin some or lose some or have some stolen so for the few kids that only needed three then I had uh, some extras for some kids that would need six. If you don't know what I'm talking about you never taught school. Perhaps I didn't explain when I was talking about the round one it's about half the work to ram up a little mold like this as opposed to a big one And that's why I like the little ones. And there we are with four castings which I will cut apart here in a little bit and uh, uh, do join me in the next video. It might be two more videos. One perhaps where I do all the reaming and mounting it on a mandrel and then one where I go to the South Bend lathe 10 inch and use the taper attachment to put the double taper which we call a crown and I'll explain that all at that time. I'm, I hope that you're liking this. Now uh, regarding comments, leave comments but I cannot answer them all although I've been doing a pretty good job lately but uh, let me say that my answers are all often very brief and sometimes it's just a thumb up or you know one of those to, to thank you. Uh, those that I do answer uh, in a lot of words I am dictating and so you'll see a lot of errors in the words because the voice recognition that they use has still leaves a lot to be desired. So that's how I answer them and I'm able to do it uh, fairly fast. I cannot type. That would just take forever. I wouldn't answer any of them, but I do not answer the mean ones. I usually delete those uh, from the hecklers, but I, I love you people out there that are watching my videos and thank you so much for watching. This is Tubal Kane, and I'll see you in the following videos.